G'day legends, so we've just gotten to Adelaide. We're gonna have a meet and greet down here at Great Southern RV, the premium urban dealer in South Australia on the 26th and 27th of this month. So if you're interested in that, come down. We're gonna be here all weekend. Come say hello, maybe even put on a barbecue, spit a yarn, um, and yeah, come down and see us. Cheers legends. G'day legends, so we're out the back of the Brosser Valley today, and we've heard a few stories in the caravan parks lately about people cooking their automatic transmissions when they're towing their big rigs around Australia. This sort of thing's really avoidable um, and today we're going to run through some things that we do um, to promote the longevity of your engine, driveline and transmission. So, so we're in the car now, apologies for my eye contact, obviously we are driving so looking forward it's probably good for safety um, first and foremost. So first of all I'll tell you guys a few things that I like to do when I'm towing. Um, like I said this is a beginner's video, this isn't, um, I'm not saying that I know everything, I'm just saying if you are beginning to tow in an automatic vehicle, here's some things that you need to think about. So, first of all, I rate a scan gauge too. So we run scan gauge too, we're not affiliated to them, but there are ultra gauges out there too. I do not recommend going the King's EDS gauge, it just doesn't give you enough information for automatics. Anyway, we run a scan gauge too, and I always tow in fourth gear. So. I go manual select in my automatic gearbox and I lock it into fourth gear. This is a five speed. So for people out there with a six speed, your sixth your six gear is your overdrive gear. And there's a few reasons why I don't like driving in um, the overdrive gear. One, it isn't the strongest gear to sit in, especially when you're hauling three ton or two and a half ton around. And the other reason is because the torque converter locks up. So for us, we don't have an, a torque converter lock up kit. And I'll talk to you, I'll talk you guys through uh, why we don't have one and a few things that I like to monitor on the dash So first of all, I've got transmission temperature on the dash So pretty much this just tells me how hot my gearbox and the whole transmission is getting the second thing I have on my scan gauge is Torque converter temps. So a torque converter is essentially without getting too in depth with it is an automatic clutch So this torque converter actually slips the drivetrain is slipping to take pressure off the engine and because it is slipping, there is friction created there. So if you sort of drive towing a big load up a hill and your torque converter is unlocked, you're getting slipping in your drivetrain and obviously that's gonna create heat. And that's why I like to monitor torque converter on my dash. The third thing that I like to monitor on the dash is the engine temperature level. So all cars, well most cars have a little dial um, and that tells you roughly where, it's just a needle and it tells you roughly where your engine temp's sitting. Normally it's in the middle, it doesn't move much. Um, and that's not much good to me. So I like to monitor how hot I'm working the engine, how much stress it's under, and by monitoring these other two things in the transmission, I can get a good idea of how the car is actually handling the drive. And it all depends on headwinds, um, speed, uh, a lot of things, how much weight you're towing, it, there's a lot of uh, wind drag, there's a lot of different factors. So first of all, I like to explain this concept of driving with an automatic like a seesaw, right? So if I was to put shift my gearing into fifth gear, so my overdrive gear, it, the car would do it, don't get me wrong, Percy would do it, but I'm now shifting the stress from my gearbox straight onto the engine. My engine temps will go through the roof because it's working the engine so hard. It's like when you're riding a bike, not down changing gears um, and selecting a lower gear to go up a hill, and you know how hard it is to ride a bike in top gear up a hill. That's what your engine's pretty much going through in layman's terms. So I've just paused the video here guys to explain in real time what happens to the temperatures when I shift to that fifth overdrive gear and try to maintain if not gain speed. The first thing you're going to see is the revs jump up which pretty much indicate that the torque converter is now unlocked. This creates slipping in the drivetrain and then you definitely get heat shown through the torque converter temperature on the right top of the scan gauge. So just take note of the temperatures on the scan gauge. So you'll see the transmission temperature increase, the torque converter increase, and also the engine temperature increase. So there you have it guys, that was 20 seconds of driving in the overdrive gear for us. As you saw, the transmission temperatures went through the roof momentarily and we did see a one degree increase in the engine temperature.
although that engine temperature increase wasn't that much you can definitely see what it would look like all day if you just had no idea about these temperatures and what strain you were putting on your vehicle the reason why i drive in fourth gear is because in fourth gear i can lock up the torque converter super easy where if i'm in my overdrive fifth gear i can't lock up my torque converter as easy it will lock in once the engine isn't under a lot of load but as soon as my foot goes a bit to the floor or the, the hill gets a bit steeper the engine load will come up the torque converter will unlock to take pressure off the engine and then that seesaw effect will go the other way and then we'll be putting extra stress on the torque converter so that's how i like to explain it um, if this is all going over your head maybe do a little bit more research on what torque converters are what your transmission temperature is actually telling you and how to monitor it all properly but this is pretty much the most basic way i can explain it and when I see my engine temp go around 90 degrees, this is where it changes from car to car. So I'm towing in a Toyota Prado, it's a 2011 model, three litre turbo diesel. It's not the most powerful engine. I always try to sit my engine temperature around the 88 degrees. I think that's the sweet spot for me. And because we've got bigger tires and all sorts of stuff, um, it does increase the uh, engine temp because we are putting more stress on the engine. So pretty much to summarize guys, the seesaw effect, if, we, if the engine's doing less revolutions going up a hill, it's gonna put stress on the engine. And if that stress on the engine hits a certain point, your torque converter is gonna unlock. Once the torque converter unlocks, you're gonna get slipping and that's when heat builds up in the torque converter. And that's when we hear them caravan park stories about people frying their transmissions in their Rangers, their Everest, their D-Max. We've heard it all um, in Toyotas as well. We've heard people frying uh, their transmission their engine cooking their engine as well um, that's when you get overheating issues as well so pretty much for me always tow in not overdrive gear for, so for me it's fourth gear I lock it in there and that locks in the torque converter I can make sure that stays at around 80 degrees my transmission stays at 80 degrees too because that's now coupled it's going the same speed it's no slipping um, so the temperatures in the transmission and the torque converter are the same I love that and then obviously like I said before keeping that engine temp at 88 degrees so the next thing I want to talk about is EGT's exhaust gases temperature so normally um, people that tow this is one of the most crucial ones um, I won't get into too much detail why but if you can monitor your EGT's definitely get it on a scan gauge and that's where your ultra gauges come in um, and if you have a different vehicle to mine you can program your EGTs into your scan gauge too and you can see it on that as well alternatively you can get a pillar um, pod which will display your temperatures in your EGTs on your pillar pod which I would recommend doing if you're doing a lap of Australia sometimes when you're going up a hill and you're putting a lot of stress on the engine um, and you're putting a lot of load on the engine you're especially when you're towing big your EGTs will go through the roof these exhaust gas temperatures can get hundreds and hundreds of degrees and they're super hot you, you'd burn your hand if you put on them um, and it's, that's only when you're putting a lot of stress on your engine so if I give you any advice if you can get a scan gauge with EGTs on it definitely do that so we've covered why, what you should do when you're towing at speed on the highway let's dive into a little bit about what you should be doing when you're off-road so like I've talked about with the torque converter lockup the same principle applies when you're off-road so if you're on the sand or you're on a boggy truck and you're in them low gears like first second third and fourth you'll find that you won't be able to lock up your torque converter that'll always be spooling to take pressure off the engine that's just the way the cars are set up automatic transmissions are set up and it does depend on car to car but pretty much in a nutshell when I'm off-road I'm always in low four is that makes the engine spool a lot harder your rpms are going up but like I said about the seesaw effect, if your RPMs are up, your engine temperature is going to go down because you are using that lower gear like a bike and it is a lot easier and a lot less effort to um, turn the wheels. So pretty much in a nutshell, if I'm off-road on sand on a tight little windy track where I can only go into first, second and third, I'm always in low range. It does take a little bit longer on your trip and a lot of people think that because your RPMs are high, you're going to be using more fuel, which is actually false. Because your engine is not working as hard, there's more revolutions, it's spooling a lot easier because the bike theory, you aren't using as much, well, you're probably using the exact same amount of fuel. However, you are taking pressure off your transmission and you are taking pressure off your engine as well. So if you are in a 200 series or a Toyota, definitely invest in a, a torque converter lockup kit. Richards and Stocklock make these. 
I won't tell you which one to go with, that's totally up to your, your preference and you can do extra research on that. But these vehicles um, are renowned for hunting gears, um, dropping back unnecessarily. And if you can lock up your torque converter, it'll make driving um, an automatic, towing a big load a lot easier. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I know it was a bit of a chin wag, um, a bit of information. I hope that this didn't just go all over your head. It's so super hard to explain it because it is really nitty gritty pretty much um, never tow in top gear always lock it in your second top gear never tow in your overdrive gear invest in a scan gauge too not only will it give you data readout you can also delete codes if you have any issues on the road um, and yeah read your user manuals um, find out what temperatures your car loves um, and then monitor on your, on your dash not only will your trip be a lot better you're going to minimize the risk of cooking your transmission cooking your um, engine or your torque converter um, it could save you a lot of money on a tow truck and a new engine. So we'll see you next time guys. Thanks heaps for watching. Um, cheers.